Well, thank you. So if we're going to focus and turn our focus now to the second half of the program, and more importantly, to um, understand what the heck this language comprehension strand is all about, um, we need to talk a little bit about um, the originator of the infographic, which you do not see in front of you, um, the reading rope. And the reason why is because Dr. Uh, Hollis Scarborough, who invented the rope infographic, uh, her publisher is pretty, pretty tight on copyright restrictions. So I completely respect that as a publisher. Um, and Dr. Scarborough actually created the reading rope back in the early 1990s. Uh, she did not know anything about the simple view of reading, by the way, at that time, which I find interesting. And she created it as a handout, a black and white handout to give to parents and teachers. Uh, her reading rope was not um, uh, devised for reading researchers. And uh, by the way, it's in black and white in its simplistic form, although it's certainly been added on to by other people, um, because uh, Dr. Scarborough says in an interview that uh, uh, color copies were just too expensive to pass out to parents and teachers. So, uh, since I'm not using her rope graphic, uh, pun intended, I'll go with my own handout here to uh, list the, uh, the uh, components of this um, other side of the reading rope. So, our first one to take a look at here is background information. And background information, of course, uh, is so critical to um, uh, reading comprehension. And let's see, let me catch up here a little bit with my uh, uh, cheat notes here. Uh, Dr. Scarborough's first component, um, according to our favorite cognitive uh, psychologist, Daniel Willingham, uh, says that uh, once kids are fluent decoders, a key determinant, he says, of uh, comprehension, perhaps the, and he capitalizes the, Key determinant of comprehension is what kids know about the topic of the text uh, they're about to read. Now, I would say that that is unfortunately true. Unfortunate because all our students do not uh, come from the same backgrounds. This background knowledge is not a level playing field. Even more unfortunately, uh, instructional time with respect to teaching background knowledge is reductive. Uh, if we spend time on teaching background knowledge, it takes away from instructional time uh, for other uh, aspects of reading instruction that we know works. What reading uh, interventions can do, and I think we need to do, is to support time allocated to social studies and science instruction. We can also teach students, though, how to apply and use background knowledge and connect it to students' prior knowledge, two different things, to make language more comprehensible. So uh, my uh, resource that we use to teach students how to use and apply background knowledge and connect to their prior knowledge are known as the background knowledge, mentor text, and response activities. And so in these activities, a literary quotation from famous uh, authors is presented. By the way, a little different than uh, way back in time, the Ed Hirsch cultural literacy, <laughs> in that uh, these are multicultural authors that, that we uh, feature, and they're contemporaneous authors, not just uh, um, old white guys in, uh, in uh, Greek togas. So we have an example here from our uh, J.K. Rowling, uh, Harry Potter fame, and uh, students go through and um, uh, the teacher reads the definition, explanation, reflection. They delve into um, observation, interpretation, and application questions. And most importantly, they learn to access their own prior knowledge and this background knowledge that they've learned from the literary quotes. And they get to share their own points of view with respect to the topic. Um, I have the students mimic the syntax of the authors because the authors have such varied syntax that often follows um, other forms of sentence variety other than the subject verb complement. So a powerful uh, mix 
You'll see in all of my language comprehension activities that we're using reading and writing as reciprocal um, other sides of the coin to the magic of uh, learning literacy. Okay, I'm going to do just a quick interruption because I know you know my views and we just talked about it ahead of time. Uh, that in terms of uh, Scarborough's rope and what I think Nell Duke did, which is a, a, a marvelous addition to the rope that not everyone agrees with. Uh, I also look at the work of Nell Duke and the importance of teaching comprehension strategies uh, through um, gradual reliefs. And so I'm just making mention of that, that while on the one hand, I would absolutely do, and uh, I'm actually right now thinking about a particular uh, administrator that's going to hear all about you <laughs> uh, because he was looking for something to use with his middle school students and I'm most certainly going to make him aware of you uh, but uh, on the other hand uh, that there's still that need to uh, to develop that form of comprehension as well and that's just Sam on a soapbox so I think what you're doing is wonderful but I, I think that uh, it, we also need to think about what it takes to do uh, to create uh, readers who knew, know how to apply the reading strategies. And you may, well, you may have more to say about that later on, but I, I couldn't avoid doing that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm that centrist who tries to think about everything. But on uh, the can't, other can't hand, be, this is like said too often enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, that's all said, and it's all yours again. All righty. Uh, so, the second component of the, the language strand um, is uh, uh, right here, uh, and we're dealing with the um, uh, issue of uh, vocabulary, specifically the way that uh, Scarborough discusses vocabulary, and this is a little confusing to teachers. Uh, she's talking about academic language, and uh, as reading intervention teachers know, it's not the tier one oral language words, nor the tier three domain specific words that we need to teach, but the more generalizable uh, tier two academic words. And um, if you're familiar with a, Appendix A in the Common Core State Standards, Isabel Beck and team does a wonderful job of uh, explaining that rationale for teaching those uh, tier two words. Okay, and those would be the California state standards, right? Uh, the California, but also the Common Core state standards. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I would say as an aside that the, I think the strongest part of the Common Core state standards are their vocabulary standards, which are sandwiched in the anchor standards for language. Uh, the breadth and depth of vocabulary instruction um, advised by the Common Core authors is exactly spot on. Um, Scarborough divides those uh, components though up into uh, various uh, parts of the strand as we'll see. Uh, thanks though to another researcher, a uh, New Zealander, Dr. Averill uh, Kopsted, uh, she developed um, um, her academic words list um, based upon the academic corpus ordering tier two words by frequency. And that's helped us prioritize and order our instruction of academic language. And so um, teachers may decide to use um, one of my plethora of mid-year assessments uh, to differentiate instruction. So teachers know, know their own students uh, best uh, as to at which points they need to teach whole class when they need to differentiate instruction. However, the academic uh, words that are provided here, uh, there are 280 of those um, in order of frequency uh, from the academic uh, words list. We're not gonna cover all those in one year. So teachers need to plug in where it seems like it's best for their students. And uh, my diagnostic academic language assessment will pinpoint um, the place to plug in for individual students or even as whole class. So students need not uh, all start at academic language number one. They might start at academic language number 45 
if that's where the student's um, oral language proficiency has gotten them to. So one of the strengths of the program is to differentiate or not differentiate, uh, teachers have those flexible options. In the uh, academic language, it uses the Freyer model. Teachers are familiar with that, no doubt, in which they um, uh, come up with a definition, good examples. They come up with synonyms, antonyms, an example, characteristic, or picture to uh, teach vocabulary in depth. The third component of uh, language comprehension um, is the language structures strand. And in language structures, we come back to another aspect of uh, vocabulary, this time more morphologically um, centered. Um, and my program has a diagnostic assessment as well in Greek and Latin prefixes, roots, and suffixes. And so uh, depending on where the teacher wants to start the continuum of instruction, um, they take the test. And uh, all these tests, by the way, are um, uh, they come with audio files or in self-correcting Google Forms. These need not to be um, pull out uh, individual assessments that take forever. Remember, I'm a teacher and this program is gauged toward teachers. Oh, by the way, um, these assessments that I'll be mentioning, all of those are provided uh, free of charge on my Pennington Publishing uh, blog. So uh, if teachers really want to find out where their students are, not only in terms of Greek and Latin prefixes, roots, and suffixes, but phonics, spelling, um, and other assessments, uh, you're invited to check out that site. Okay, and would you, I'm going to ask you to send me that link labeled that way so that we can say, hey, this was the link he was talking about in the uh, interview. So that, uh, because there's, you know, isn't there a commercial right now about it? We really love free, okay. Uh, and so uh, I bet there are some teachers out there that would really love free and love that link. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so um, I would add that in addition to um, introducing the prefixes, roots, and suffixes, again, as in the morphological activities um, in my uh, uh, first half of the program, the prefixes, roots, and suffixes are carefully selected so that mnemonically, they're very memorable. So C meaning separate, lek meaning root and choose, read or choose, they go together uh, in select, for example. Uh, students brainstorm example words so that they're uh, using the uh, prefixes, roots, and suffixes in words that they do know and connect to. And uh, another strength of the Common Core State Standards to plug them is their uh, use of language resources such as dictionaries and thesauruses. So um, there, is, um, there are activities that apply the Greek and Latin uh, word parts to those resources. Now we jump into something kind of fun where uh, teachers um, in my experience have uh, less experience, especially at the upper elementary levels. And a reminder that you know my program is uh, for uh, ages uh, eight through adult. And that is um, in language uh, uh, structures, what do we do about syntax? Um, syntax is specifically mentioned by Dr. Scarborough in her row. And um, reading these quotes, I think might be helpful as uh, teachers are not as familiar with these, this terminology. According to a uh, researcher, J.F. Green, the inadequate ability to process the syntax of language results in the inability to understand what is heard as well as what is read. Beyond word knowledge is the single most powerful deterrent to listening and reading comprehension. Might have some disagreement on that, but there are claims as to its importance. Uh, a lot of teachers out there will be very familiar with the work of the late uh, William Van Cleve, and he defines syntax as the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences. Complex sentence structures often confound students who struggle in reading, uh, especially students who struggle in reading of expository text. 
students who struggle with reading, they get lost in these complex sentence structures, including the positive phrases, clauses, pronoun antecedents, to mention but a few. We've got to teach syntax in reading if we're going to make sense of what is in the text for students. Um, so I have a variety of activities. Again, I have a diagnostic grammar usage and a mechanics assessment that can pinpoint um, what features uh, uh, groups of students and individual students themselves have already mastered and have yet to, to master. And so the teacher can choose to differentiate instruction or select the, um, the lessons that are most appropriate for their students. Teachers know their own kids and adults as well. So um, as you see here is an exercise on adverbial clauses, teaching students to recognize complex sentences with those crazy subordinating conjunctions at the beginning, middle, and end is so important to getting them to access the meaning of sentences. So lots of creative, fun exercises in syntax. Next, and I will admit, this is not part of um, Scarborough's Road. However, if we're gonna talk language structures, and here you mentioned Nell Du, um, she mentions the importance of bringing in other um, things that are not in the strands themselves. And one specifically that she deals with would be executive functions. Um, I would add on pragmatics um, as well. So pragmatics are those social cues that are used, such as tone, word choice, body language, cultural assumptions, traditions that authors bring to the text that um, good readers become acquainted with and use to be able to make sense and make meaning out of text. The executive functions, um, those refer to the, what are called the self-regulatory processes. Um, and there are a lot of things that maybe not are particularly related to reading, such as goal setting, et cetera, that are important study skills. But specifically with respect to reading, um, executive skills such as reading stamina, flexibility, um, making use of working memory, uh, metacognition, those things are essential to um, accessing text. And so even though they're not in Scarborough's rope, I'm telling you, we need to teach them. In addition, rhetorical stance, to know the voice, audience, purpose, and form of the text acquaints the readers with different ways that authors uh, use language to communicate meaning. All right, uh, let's see, where are we? <clears throat> Our next section is verbal reasoning. And verbal reasoning is something that's gonna bring back in, of course, vocabulary. So as you see, vocabulary is infused in different uh, components of the language comprehension of Scarborough's rope. Uh, again, common core standards come out as chaps here. Um, the Common Core Standards emphasize multiple meaning words. Um, and of course, we have a diagnostic assessment pinpointing where instruction should begin. Um, these are more worksheet-based resources, but I gotta tell you, worksheets sometimes do the trick. Um, they're concise, they're effective practice, and the teachers know how to interact with the content to um, make sense of them. So multi-meaning words uh, establish um, homonyms. We see here, for example, track uses a noun and a verb, a good use of context clues to show the meanings of the words and have students uh, experience one homonym in terms of the other. Um, if, for example, we understand homonyms, we get to understand jokes. The Common Core even includes puns as a standard, which I love. Um, if you don't understand multiple, multiple meaning words, you won't understand this joke. Bear with me, Sam, if you would. I'm somewhat of an um, uh, unabridged humorist here. Uh, why can you never starve in the desert? Mm. Because of all the sand, which is there. The sandwich. Oh, <laughs> so you've got to know the homonyms in order to get the jokes. 
Um, but you also need to know the homonyms to access meaning of. Uh, well, and I, I'd recommend that you also have your Amazon ready and play a drum roll right after that joke. <laughs> um, not only do we need to uh, learn uh, uh, multiple meanings, we need to learn uh, figures of speech. Uh, and Scarborough specifically mentions uh, metaphors there. Um, so we need to teach um, implied language, not uh, necessarily stated uh, comparisons. Okay, so uh, for example, I mentioned that we got to understand multiple meanings to get uh, jokes. Um, if we're going to understand Neil Young's song, Love's a rose, but you better not pick it. It only grows when it's on the fire. Hand full of thorns and you know you missed it. Lose your love when you say the word mine. <laughs> You're going to have to understand metaphor to be able to stand, understand what the old rocker Neil Young is uh, saying. So it might be dating me a little bit there, but I couldn't resist. No, uh, and, and I'm just going to add the, uh, a boost to what you just said. Uh, for folks for whom English is not their first language, metaphors are oftentimes the tripping blocks uh, and that they are incredibly important. So uh, the, just on that count as well, uh, I'm glad to see that in your program. Absolutely. Idiomatic expressions as well. Um, research has shown that uh, of our a written language, one third is idi in idiot, idiomatic expressions. And so um, those are things that uh, when you're studying languages um, are very important to learn uh, for conversation as well as in, uh, in writing. Uh, word relationships uh, are very important. Uh, synonyms, antonyms, um, some of the old SAT uh, analogy relationships uh, are all part of verbal reasoning, understanding how categories and subcategories interact with each other. And lastly, uh, connotations. Um, language has to be understand in the context of other language and uh, while adore and admire are quite similar, I think you'd rather have um, your uh, partner adore you rather than just admire you. <laughs> Although both would go together very well. And uh, you would not want the other side of the spectrum to dislike and to hate. And so teaching connotations and having students see various shades of meaning is just critical to their understanding of non-literal text. Uh, reading comprehension strategies. Okay, Sam, here you go. Um, you and I are on the same page on this. As uh, Dr. Shanahan talks about, a claim is often made by knowledge advocates um, that strategy teaching is ineffective. Um, that isn't the case, says Dr. Shanahan. The claim confuses strategies with skills. Strategies help, but skills not so much. The basic premise of strategies is that readers need to actively think about the ideas in text if they're going to understand. And since determining how to think about a text involves choices, strategies are tied up in metacognition, that is thinking about thinking. And Sam's gonna want me to start talking about how we practice that. And we're gonna get to that, Sam, I promise. Okay. <laughs> so um, I use, uh, uh, teacher lessons along with guided and independent practice, um, as you can see here, to get students to apply um, this uh, internal monitoring of the text, this interactivity with the text to make meaning from the text itself. Um, and a couple more examples. Now, another aspect of um, the language comprehension strand that is not mentioned is reading fluency. Um, reading fluency is something that is infused throughout a word wet recognition and language comprehension. Uh, Dr. Scarborough says that um, reading, fluence with, reading fluency is the one aspect that she's most criticized for not including on her rope. However, she considers fluency and comprehension to be products of um, 
both word recognition and uh, language uh, comprehension acquisition. I would tend to disagree a bit and say that these are things that we need to practice uh, because practice makes perfect. And so fluency and comprehension are huge parts of my program. I do believe they fit in nicely into our category of verbal reasoning though, because as readers become more fluent and are able to infer the meanings of text and in terms of uh, making meaningful inferential um, uh, comprehension strategy connections to text, I think it fits in and we need to practice it. Uh, specifically, my uh, um, animal fluency articles are, are based on the pets fluency assessment. I do a two minute timing. And so uh, uh, teachers are able to assess their students and see exactly what their levels are. <clears throat> the uh, 45 uh, articles that I use are all based on the animal theme, corresponding with my animal sound spelling cards. And uh, students, uh, these are all high interest uh, expository articles. As you can see, word counts are provided on the left and teachers can create these on their own. This is not rocket science. Um, even though reading is rocket science, as uh, Louisa Moth says, these are not, and the resources are not. Um, additionally, the articles themselves are um, arranged in upside down pyramid uh, design. Uh, the first two paragraphs are at third grade reading level, notice the larger print. The next two paragraphs, fifth grade reading level, and the last two are at the seventh grade reading level, such that the reader begins practice in fluency practice at an easier level to build confidence and then moves to more difficult academic language and sentence length. So uh, students move through their practice in fluency in doing so. Now, a unique uh, component of my program is the modeling of this reading that uh, Dr. Rosinski talks about all the time. And the modeling is done uh, with uh, uh, three different level speeds of moi reading the articles on YouTube. And so students will access the um, articles on YouTube, practice along with those. And if teachers would like to, I highly uh, recommend completing motivational fluency timings. Students take a cold read at the start, uh, a two minute read, and they easily count up from the word counts, their fluency rates. They practice with a model reading, which works on accuracy as well as prosody, et cetera. And then um, when the teacher says time, they take a hot timing and students record on top of the cold timing um, their progress. Nothing new, nothing innovative here, but the model readings on YouTube teachers love and are very helpful for students as well. Okay, uh, and something I wanna point, if you could go back one just for a second, something I wanna point out is uh, there's always the danger that some students will learn that reading uh, rate is the key. And so the faster you read, the better you are. And just the fact that you have that down as 115 to 135 is telling me you understand, and I, I'm sure the students are made to understand that reading rate is something that's appropriate to the reading. It's not how fast you go, you know, I'm so old American. You don't want to be an auctioneer. Uh, you want to read at a rate that's appropriate to whatever you're reading. And uh, some of the other tests that I've seen um, uh, tend to encourage that other way of doing things. And I, I've been admonished for being a little too critical of those other tests. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm just happy to see that uh, you're letting them know, hey, this is about right. Uh, this is about the right pace, not too fast, not too slow. So reading is more, uh, reading rate uh, needs to be adjusted to what you're reading. Uh, you're not trying to become an auctioneer. And I'm sorry, and that's, I, that's I had where, to on my soapbox about that. No, absolutely. And that's where uh, those reading strategies come in that we have to read uh, for uh, different purposes and we need to be able to interact with the test. 
uh, text. And sometimes that means we've got to go back and reread and rethink what we've just read. Uh, so uh, the articles are recorded at three different reading speeds at the students' challenge levels. Um, and so um, we're working on reading speed, we're working on uh, attention to punctuation, we're working on um, uh, at the student's challenge level, and uh, with the model reading, we're working on word accuracy. And this, this is all available on YouTube. Yep, yep. That's so okay. cool. <laughs> now, uh, talking about comprehension strategies. And uh, so the accompanying uh, script comprehension worksheets, uh, they feature the same text as the animal fluency articles. Nothing new there, but each article includes five inferential questions. One question for each of my five script comprehension cues. So my script comprehension cues stands for this acronym, S for summarize, C for connect, R for rethink, I interpret, and P for predict. Uh, additionally, three uh, vocabulary words are bold-faced in the reading comprehension worksheets and students define and use the vocabulary words in uh, original context clue sentences. Each and every one of these 43 comprehension worksheets has these same five um, comprehension cues so that students begin to internalize these cues to talk to the text. And, and in doing so, they're building that internal monitoring that is so critical to developing the independent readers that we want to, to see. And last but not least, our literacy knowledge. Uh, as the last component in the other side of the rope, uh, Dr. Scarborough said that we need to understand uh, the text structure, organizational patterns, and uh, even literary terms and uh, the way uh, that uh, things are put together. So uh, I have a number of activities that we use. The teacher presents the lesson, students do guided practice, independent practice in order to analyze literary features, both of expository text structure, as well as narrative text structure and other genres too, uh, poetry resources, et cetera. We want students to not just be stuck on narrative um, learning, we want them to have the exposure, wide exposure of the genre of the English language so that they become flexible readers um, and skilled readers as Dr. Scarborough wants them to become. So I uh, hope you, our audience here, uh, I know a lot of them, uh, you're the editor of the Missouri Reader. So that's the show me state. And I hope they got an idea of um, me showing some of the resources that I use in my program that might uh, uh, inspire some teachers to create resources of their own for their own program, especially primary teachers, as, as my resources are more focused on older students. Uh, they can make those ad adaptations. And uh, I hope it's taken some of the mystery out of the other side of the rope, language comprehension. You know, Sam, the, the word recognition um, is the area that we teachers feel comfortable teaching. We've done it for years. Um, we've got our Facebook groups that align with our way of thinking, and it's the most contentious area. The language comprehension strand is the area that teachers generally agree needs to be taught, but if you uh, do a, re uh, a little searching or ask a question on a Facebook group about language comprehension, you're not going to get much response. Okay. If it is that I'll, critical, if you, if we you need could to do switch it. over to um, uh, stop sharing the screen so that we can see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. So wonderful. Okay, and actually, I'm going to change over so that we see the two of us. Uh, I this has been incredibly informative, uh, and um, I think I hope it inspires some teachers uh, to be do, creating their own programs. I'm super impressed that, uh, that, that those are first copyright dates go back to 2008. <laughs> uh, and um, that means that there are people out there using it. I'm sure that we will we'll probably do a follow-up at, at some point about all this. 
because uh, I fully intend to share this with some administrators I know, uh, and we'll see what comes of that. But um, this is the, the time where I usually say, uh, do you, uh, I think I've already put in my two cents worth about, you know, background knowledge, yes, but yes, you also have to teach comprehension strategies uh, and teach them uh, and then have yeah, and show that the students can use them. So lots of innovations here, lots of ideas that could be adapt adapted at different levels. That all said, I'm gonna change it back over to just talking to you for a second, because this, this is your last chance of saying, what else you got? Anything, any final thoughts? This is gonna be almost it. Uh, I, I would just say I, I love uh, teachers um, and uh, love, chatting with teachers. So uh, teachers can uh, reach me, you know, via my Facebook page. I'm active in Facebook groups, penningtonpublishing.com um, and my Pennington bu Publishing uh, blog. I love chatting, going through problem solving, whether you're using my program materials or others. Um, I care about kids learning to read. I want, Sam, uh, for my older students focused ages eight to adult, I want them to beat the odds that reading researchers say that only one in six are ever gonna ever be able to catch up to reading at grade level. And uh, when I hear stories of teachers using my resources or their own in order to beat those odds, that's what it's all about. So that's the only two cents I'd throw in. Uh, and it's a well worth it two cents. Um, so we'll make sure and make sure to send me that, that that content information if they want to talk to you directly what the best ways to do that uh you'll blog that in uh and now there's one final bomberito tradition it's almost it's a little hokey but <laughs> you gotta live with it what we do at the end of any bomberito interview is we do a zoom wave goodbye uh, and stay aboard afterwards so goodbye and thank you so much for this very informative session